Greetings. Yesterday, I posted my video sharing that Professor David Bunis's level of agreement with the declarations of pastor majors about the pews was not as forceful and definitive as many had believed. In the short period since the release of that video, some have raised the gentle objection that Professor Bunis, noting that he did not say that the script is solitreo, is not the same as him explicitly denying that it's solitreo, rather he might have just been le leaving the question open. Uh, others have begun to downplay the significance of Professor Bunis's opinions either way. Therefore, I wanted to make one more quick video to clarify a few things. First, I want to show how much emphasis Pastor Majors put on Professor Bunis's purported confirmation during that uh, Boom Church panel discussion back on November 22nd. Then I want to share a few more clarifications which Professor Bunis has put forth via email. So here I'm going to show a couple minutes of footage from the Boom Church panel discussion, which, as I said, took place on Sunday, November 22nd. Uh, note in particular, as you watch this, note how Pastor Majors asserts that Professor Bunis confirmed Benaiah Israel's interpretation of the markings. Note how Pastor Majors says Professor Bunis backs the sentence that he presented. Note how he insinuates that it is this scholar who enables him to say what is on the pew. And note the way he treats this as practically a mic drop of a moment. Here you go. But he actually confirmed that what you're saying and what the, how you translated it was actually correct in how you translated it. So not only did it confirm what it sees, what, what it says here in, you know, take or grasp the way of the Lord or God, um, he confirms the way you laid it out. And so um, we go to the next slide here. Um, and so this is another aspect of it because we had it tilted from, you know, um, in landscape, but now this is vertical, the actual picture of it. So it kind of gives you more of a, a understanding of it. But so what, after all of that in the package sent to him, not only did you bring out, but he also, ex it showed there was some other aspects within the pews that we didn't, that we didn't know. And it says here, thanks for the new look. Thanks for the new look at the characters looking at it. That says, it seems to me that you could also see Yisrael in the characters or in the pews. So not only does it say take a grasp of God, but it says take a grasp of Yah or God Israel with a bass voice, as you put it, or with a loud voice, meaning praise him loudly. That's what this means. So uh, Abu asked, can we find a coherent sentence? Well, yeah, we just did. And not only that, we got a scholar to back it. And so at this point, I think all of y'all, all of y'all owe Pastor Kelly an apology. Not only do I think all of y'all owe Pastor Kelly an apology, publicly, the same way you did those videos refuting the pews and it being Arabic, and the same way you was clowning them because he couldn't read Hebrew, and the same way you're trying to say that a uh, 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 clowning about a uh, uh, jet match and all this other stuff, Y'all need to issue a public apology and you need to delete all of your videos because those videos are false. Now we got a real video from a real information from a real scholar to be able to say what's on the pews. With that, I don't have nothing else to say, y'all. Y'all. Okay, so with those clips in mind, let's now look at some emails from Professor Boonis himself. I'm going to show three emails, one of which someone shared with me and the other two which were sent directly to me. The first email is actually one which Professor Bunis sent to Pastor Majors, and he sent it to him a week ago. It reads as follows, quote, Dear Will, sorry not to get back to you after you wrote again. I'm very busy with a project I've got to finish up, and it's leaving me no time for anything else. I received an email from someone called, name redacted, I'll forward it. Maybe you've been in touch with him. He says he also thinks the inscription could say Yisrael, but we both think it's not in Solitreo script, but in regular Hebrew square letters. Best wishes, David. What's significant about that email is that he explicitly states that he does not think the pew he examined contains Solitreo script. Recall that the reason Pastor Majors reached out to specifically Professor David Bunis is because of his background with Solitreo. Different members of that Boom Church panel had even watched Bunis teach uh, the Solitreo writing system. Yeah, so I, I really want to ask, 
can we agree that it would have been preferable that Pastor Majors also had shared that Bunis had told him explicitly that he did not consider the markings to constitute Solitreo script? Being that he sat on that email for a week, I hope it would at least be understandable and even forgivable if some wonder what else he might have kept to himself. But that aside, moving on, this is the second email which was uh, that I'm going to show. And uh, this particular email was sent to someone else, but Professor Bunis copied both me and Pastor Majors. And uh, this email reads as follows. Thanks for your email. Quote, thanks for your email. When I expressed a few hesitant words about what was written on the church pew, I had no idea it would help cause such a furor locally and maybe beyond. When I first saw the inscription, I thought it might be Arabic script. Then, after seeing some interpretations by others, it seemed to me that one might be able to read the Hebrew word Yisrael, that is, Israel, in it. I am far from sure about this, nor do I think that what seems to be some kind of inscription on the pew is in Solitreo script, or is necessarily in Hebrew at all. Judging from the reactions I've been receiving, my words were rather misrepresented by, on William Brown's program. Only part of our email correspondence was presented, and even that seems to have been partly misinterpreted. Peace to all from Jerusalem, cordially David Burns. End quote. In this second email, Professor Bunis again makes clear that he does not think Solitreo script appeared on that pew. Also significant, in case some thought his suggestion that Yisrael or Israel appears on the pew might suffice as confirmation that Hebrew appears on the pew, in this second email, Professor Bunis made clear that he is far from sure about that. He also notes that he is not saying Hebrew of any sort necessarily appears on that pew at all. In short, when he made that suggestion about, about Israel, the word Israel, he was not making any sort of firm declaration. Rather, he was offering a soft suggestion for one possible interpretation of markings that can be interpreted in a variety of ways. And with that, finally, we turn to the third email. And this is an email which was sent directly to me by Professor Bunis. And it reads as follows. Quote, Dear Mr. Alman Hatani, or Abdel Messi, thanks for your email. I'm sorry it took a while for me to reply. Basically, I confirm your understanding of my correspondence with William Brown. As I had written him in the beginning, the letters looked more Arabic than Hebrew to me, but I'm certainly no authority in Arabic paleography. Before writing you, I spoke with someone very familiar with the various Arabic and Hebrew scripts, and he was unable to read any Arabic, or frankly Hebrew, words out of the church pew inscriptions. When someone who had uh, looked at the inscription showed us how he thought the Hebrew word for Israel or Yisrael might be read out of it, it looked to me like it might possibly be so, although I could not see this clearly without the markings and darkenings that he evidently added. <laughs> Okay, and this next portion here, this is him quoting a portion of the email that I had sent to him. So he's quoting me here. To your questions, did you in fact reach a firm conclusion that a discernible Hebrew phrase is on the relevant pew, or did you merely suggest possible interpretations of a collection of markings open to multiple interpretations? And did you support a reading that could be translated, take grasp of the Lord, etc.? If so, can you share what the precise Hebrew phrase was which was translated that way? And now here's his reply. My reply is, no, I definitely did not reach a firm conclusion to the effect. And yes, I think that at most, the markings are open to multiple interpretations. I certainly cannot make any connection between the English phrase you cited and any Hebrew expression I can think of. End quote. First and foremost, what's significant here in this third email is that Professor Bunis makes very clear that he never endorsed that complex sentence Pastor Major claimed that he agreed with. He also alludes to how his less than firm suggestion that Israel might appear on the pew was rooted more in Benaiah's highlights than the markings themselves. And I can certainly understand that as, for example, what might look like an Ashuri Lamed from Benaiah's highlights will not look like such without those highlights. Now, I'm not attributing some sort of... Uh, deception to Benaiah. I'm just saying the way he highlighted the pew, it's easy to see how someone else might see something that isn't actually there. And I would say unwittingly, including on Benaiah's part, unwittingly. Uh, 
that aside, whatever the case, to sum up, that Boom Church panel's portion on David Bunis was the part of the discussion that generated by far the most excitement. It convinced more than a few people that a scholar had definitively settled the matter. Pastor Majors himself said there was nothing more to say after that. But now we know that Professor Bunis's position was badly misrepresented. Before I close, on a lighter note, on a more fun note, uh, permit me to share that when I read that Bunis initially told Majors that the text looked to him more like Arabic, I thought to myself, you know, man, I, I wish Majors had shared that fun detail. Whatever the case, on the topic of Arabic, I'm guessing that some might find interesting that last email, including a portion which made mention of a person quite familiar with Arabic, not seeing any Arabic on the relevant pew. Although, fair, you know, to be fair, it says the same person didn't see any Hebrew either. Uh, nonetheless, that's worth mentioning because it's my understanding that both Pastor Majors and Pastor Kelly Richardson intend to release a video soon, perhaps as early as this weekend, seeking to refute the claim that Arabic appears on the pews. While I'm not yet sure if they intend to attribute that position to me or just to the staff of the church down there in uh, Savannah, uh, if they try to present that as my position, they'll be attacking a straw man. Uh, both of them have made clear that they saw my appearance on Berean TV back on November 15th, which was the previous Sunday, one week before that uh, Boom Church panel discussion. And uh, so being as they both watched uh, my appearance on Berean TV, it seems worthwhile to close this out with a few clips of, clips of me on that show repeatedly clarifying that I was not actually arguing for Arabic appearing on the, on the pews. Rather, I was offering a hypothetical case as part of a thought experiment to show what an attempt to argue for language in the pews should look like. Uh, remember that at the time of that discussion, to my knowledge, no one had made a public case for Hebrew on the pews, and I mean by actually getting into the markings themselves. Uh, Benaya was the first to do so. Benaya Israel was the first to do so shortly thereafter. But as up to the point of that discussion on Berean TV, I, I didn't know of anyone who had made in a public attempt. And by the way, let me say again that that's why I appreciate Benaya's efforts so much, even if I don't agree with his conclusions. Uh, so... I'll close here and I'll just say that uh, I really look forward to the comments of others. And uh, then I'll just simply let these uh, the relevant clips close out the show. God bless. So as a bit of a thought experiment, let's see what this approach might look like if one were attempting to demonstrate that Arabic was present in the markings on those pews. Now, as a disclaimer, I'm not actually endorsing the claim that Arabic appears in these pews. But nonetheless, let's just go through an example, a thought experiment, as I said. Sean brought out a good point. Is now, because people could be confused with what you said with the Arabic, is it definitely Arabic or you were trying to put a hypothetical out there? Yes, precisely. The latter. It was a hypothetical case for Arabic. I do not believe there are any, I do, not, I do not believe there's any discernible language in the pews. Of course, I'm, I'm willing to be corrected. But what I was showing is that if people want to say there's a language in the pews, I was showing how a person should go about attempting to prove that. They should get into the markings on the pews. And that's what I did. And what I'll say is while my case for Arabic was purely hypothetical, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Rodney Frederick says, what evidence leads him to believe this is Arabic on the benches? I don't believe it's actually Arabic, but what I was showing is that there's a better case for Arabic than there is for Hebrew if there is a uh, a case, if there's a language on there. It was, again, a thought experiment. It was, it was to show what proper methodology should be. Do you want me to read Oshaya's comment? Yeah, keep going, yeah. I put them up so there. what language does the guest, Abu, and his naive experience think the writing on the pews? I don't think I hear the answer. Correct me if I'm wrong. My answer is I do not believe there is any discernible language on those pews but my case for arabic which was a hypothetical case it was to show how people should argue for language on the pews if you're going to claim there's language on the pews get into the actual markings and start showing discernible language the, the the distinguishing features of discernible language that's what i did and i did it in just a few minutes and uh you know i feel that no one has done that for hebrew no one has actually made a case for hebrew which involves actually looking at the markings on the pews